So let's go and take a look at this vector. And so what we have is we have a, a vector that's, um, if we were going to graph this, we'd have it positive 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And it goes up to negative 1, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. OK? So here's our initial point P. Here's our end point Q. And what we want to be able to do is, well, this is actually just a point. What we want to be able to do is be able to determine, all right, we want to be able to determine the component form of the vector and also the magnitude. So let's just go ahead and write out again what our formula for our component form is. All right, and when dealing with our component form of P, Q, All right, we're now going to have P1, I'm sorry, Q1 minus P1, comma, Q2 minus P2. So now we simply need to say, well, what is our P1 and Q, Q1, P2 and Q2? Well, here's going to be P1, P2, Q1, Q2. So now let's just go ahead and represent these. So therefore, we'll have q1, which is negative 1, minus 4, comma q2, which is 5, minus negative 7. There we go. Negative 1 minus 4 is going to be a negative 5, comma 5 minus a negative 7 is now going to be 12. OK, so that's going to be your component form of your vector, meaning that if your vector all right, so if by putting this over here, you're now your component form, remember, has an initial point at 0, 0. And now it has two new endpoints, which we call v1 and now v2. Right? So these are now your two new endpoints for, um, for your component form v. So therefore, you could go over negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. All right. So remember, dealing with component form, what that's going to do is that's going to just tell you, kind of give you a standard position. When you have, rather than your initial point being down here, now your initial point is at the point 0, 0. All right. So now let's go and take a look at the magnitude, right? We want to find this distance. So we need to use the distance formula. All right. And the important thing when looking at this, uh, when I want to be able to find the magnitude, or in this case, we say this is v. So if I want to just find the magnitude um, of my angle v, well, we know, remember, the distance is, or the magnitude is going to be the square root of q1 minus p1 squared plus q2 minus p2 squared. All right? But ladies and gentlemen, remember that we already worked on this. We already know that this is v1. And this is v2, right? So I show this again, but I'll just rewrite it again. We now know that this is the same thing as v1 squared plus v2 squared, right? Because v1, we already know, is q1 minus p1. So therefore, now all I simply need to do is take v1 square it and then take v2 square it. So I'm going to have the square root of negative 5 squared plus 12 squared. And we'll go ahead and this negative 25 squared is going to be 25 plus 144. Take the square root of that. Therefore, you could say that the magnitude is going to equal for this, comp for this vector, your magnitude is going to equal the square root of 13. Oh, I'm sorry. I was thinking ahead. Square root of 169, which is equal to 13. So that means the distance of this vector is going to be 13. OK? Questions? Preguntas? From, well, it's 13 from P to Q, 
right? But then what we did is we wrote what is, what is the component form of the vector. So all you need to know from its initial to its terminal point is 13. 